Greetings Marvel people, my name is Iwana and last weekend I made a game without gameplay. There is definitely great music accompaniment, there is some art, but there isn't much to experience in it. So let's take a look at my mistakes and hopefully learn something from them. Now the first and very important problem is that I started a game that I have no idea how to make. I do this all the time and yet I start every single one of my game jams just like that. I wanted the movement to be similar to those balance games where you control a car and try to ride over ridges. So the level here was just an image I made in Photoshop and then I stacked a polygon collider on top of it and the code is simply a wheel from a car from these balance games I mentioned earlier. And then I discovered the sprite shapes. These helped me make convincing level design inside of Unity and that was very great because I didn't want to use Photoshop and images for my colliders. I have no idea whether that's an optimal solution or if it's good performance wise, but definitely it gets the job done. And a good thing about sprite shapes is that you can use them without a sprite renderer, so I definitely didn't want to display any tiles, but I just wanted to have this collider. Next, I remembered seeing a certain picture of how Hollow Knight implemented parallax effect in Unity and the trick was just that you use a 3D camera in a 2D environment, so that's what I did. And while using Unity physics, I ran into the issue that you could easily jump out of the boundaries of my level. In order to fix that, I snatched another thing from Hollow Knight, the areas where you are restricted to jump. In order to make it work, I added a different physics layer to Unity. One is called Ground, and if you touch it, you can jump again. And another one is called Restricted Area. If you touch it, it doesn't count as resetting your ability to jump. I think that at this point it was already near evening of the first day, and I, I have made a map for main game abilities or stuff that I wanted to implement during the game jam, and what did I start doing next? I of course made art for the game. I, I don't know how and why this happens to me, but it does all the time. I just can't really work on something that doesn't inspire me artistically. Once I start drawing the levels, I simply can't stop. There is no such lever that would <laughs> prevent me from doing that, unfortunately. So obviously I spent a lot of time making art, and especially this waypoint for some reason, and I didn't have time to implement any game mechanics or animations or anything else that I had planned. So what should you do if you are low on time and deadline is coming? Of course, make more art, add more post-processing and do all that useless stuff. Uh, well, at least that's what I did. So three hours before the game jam ended, I started doing what I was supposed to do initially, prototyping. I started working with simple blocks, I made mechanic that would just get the job done, I could judge how far away should I put the next plank, how far should be the obstacles, uh, which mechanics don't feel so good and would the game still be fun if there wasn't all that art in it. So here is just some food for thought. In the last three hours I made death mechanics and all those corpses, I made this cheesy as hell pause menu and I added a way to finish the game. What I want to say is that you can really accomplish a lot of stuff if you don't focus on polishing it too early. And on top of that, if the prototype turns out to feel great even without all of that polish, then you know that you definitely have a great game idea in your hands. And that's it for today, I hope that you found my experience useful and won't repeat my mistakes. What advice would you give to people who make games in short time constraints? Please share them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Farewell.